Okay, folks, let's take a look at endotracheal intubation, the overview of that, the introduction to taking a look at the patient, and we're going to introduce a new mnemonic that we can utilize to predict difficult intubation. That's going to be really, really important. So predicting difficult intubation is probably something that you should concern yourself greatly with. And the reason for that is we really want to take a look at our patient before we ever get a laryngoscope and a blade out. And before we ever put that laryngoscope blade down into the patient's throat, we should have a pretty darn good idea as to whether or not we're going to be successful with our first attempt. And we should have put into practice, put into play, something that will increase our odds of being successful. And we're going to do that by predicting difficult airway. So the LEMON mnemonic is an acronym that we can use for uh, physical examination to assess for difficult intubation. So this is going to be an important thing you want to remember. Again, this is right out of Walls and Murphy's book, uh, emergency, the Manual of Emergency Airway Management. So kind of an important uh, concept. I've also placed all of these acronyms. They're all available for you in, uh, in, uh, in Moodle so that you can pull those up at your leisure and review them. All right, so moans. When we talked about moans, that was to predict difficulty with bag valve mask ventilation. Now we're going to employ this new acronym. The acronym is the LEMON, and LEMON allows us to do a couple things to predict difficulty with intubation, all right, so using direct laryngoscopy. So the L in LEMON looks for, uh, it tells us to look externally. So we're going to look at a couple things. We're going to look to see if the patient has uh, teeth that are greater size than they should be. Again, when you perform direct laryngoscopy, the goal here is to maximize your view of the patient's glottic opening. And so if we have big teeth, um, then that's going to present some challenges. That's going to reduce the size of the opening that we can look down. All right, also the mandible. Do we have, um, do we have a mandible that's really sucked in close to the, to the chest there? So as you'll see in this particular case, this patient has no chin here whatsoever. That means you're going to have to go all the way back here and then all the way anterior to get into the trachea. So this type of presentation is more difficult and predicts airway difficulty. We talked about uh, the morbidly obese. Again, obesity is going to be a common theme here throughout everything we do. Uh, generally, obesity presents challenges uh, that are difficult to overcome in certain cases. Obviously, in this case, if there's any sort of traumatic event, this is what we're referring to with the anatomical disruption. So looking externally at the patient and going, ugh, that looks like it's going to be a tough intubation, is actually a pretty good predictor of whether or not that is going to be a difficult intubation. So this allows you to put into play, instead of doing something simple like using the normal approach to intubation, you might go straight to using a bougie or a tube introducer first. That may be the way you decide to intubate any of these folks. All right, the E stands for evaluate and evaluate the 332 rule. So if you can take the patient's three fingers, for example, their ring, their middle, and their index finger, and they fit nicely in between their teeth, as is shown in this illustration, the bigger this opening is, the easier it is for you to perform laryngoscopy. So the 332 rule, the first thing is we're going to see how wide can we open this patient's mouth. The next one is going to be how much distance exists between the mentum, the chin bone, and the hyoid bone, which is essentially where this bend takes place. Um, again, if we can fit three or more of the patient's finger between the tip of their chin and the hyoid bone, the greater this distance, the better off we are. And then last but not least, the two, we're going to be looking at the distance between the hyoid bone and the larynx. All right, so uh, the, the uh, distance that exists here, again, the greater the distance, the better off we're going to be, the easier it is for us to intubate. So if you're only able to do one, one, one when you evaluate your patient, you can anticipate difficulty with the intubation. All right, the M stands for a malampati class. Now, you don't have to remember all of the different grades uh, of their grades and their classes. There are different uh, there are different ways of evaluating the airway. What I do want you to do is recall when we talked a little bit about airway. Uh, anatomy, I mentioned to you, when you can see the hard palate, the soft palate, and the uvula, and you can see deep into the hypopharynx when the patient opens their mouth or when you open their mouth, this is a very easy airway for you to perform laryngoscopy on. Now look at the other end of the spectrum. In this case, when the patient opens their mouth, the only thing you can see is the hard palate. 
You have absolutely no view of the soft palate. You have no view of the uvula. You have no view of the hypopharynx here at all. You can already anticipate that this is going to be a critically difficult patient for you to uh, perform laryngoscopy on. So again, Chris Tuzo's method is if I can see this when I look down your throat, then I may intubate you if I've already gone down the route of needing to intubate you. If I'm considering intubation and I look and this is all I see or this is all I see, then I'm going to think to myself, I really hope that my bag valve mass technique is up to speed because this, these two, class 3 and class 4 airways, are very, very difficult without uh, fiber optic. And even with fiber optic, it's difficult for us in the out-of-hospital setting. I'm not telling you not to intubate these folks. I'm just telling you prepare to have a difficult time. And remember that when we waste time trying to intubate folks unsuccessfully, that increases their morbidity and their mortality. So the first do no harm thing is something we should be constantly thinking about when we're performing airway management. All right, the O in the lemon uh, evaluation is for obstruction. Again, it can be tumor, it can be, uh, it can be an abscess, anything in the hypopharynx, anything to the soft palate, any trauma, any angioedema, anything that's going to obstruct your field of view, this is the kind of stuff you're looking for. And this doesn't take a long time, and you don't even need to have an awake patient. Again, the patient that presents to you with um, a history of throat cancer or mouth cancer, and you decide, hey, this patient needs to be intubated for whatever reason, you come to that conclusion, you take a quick peek in their mouth, you scissor their teeth open, you look in their mouth, and you see a huge obstruction like the one that's here, maybe the best choice here is no longer intubation. And again, you come back to bag valve mask uh, with, uh, with the appropriate adjunct. So just be considerate of that. And then last but not least, the lemon law or the lemon rules uh, tell us about uh, uh, neck mobility. So anybody who is in um, cervical precaution, whether they have a C-spine collar on or whether on a backboard as well, or the patient that's unable to move, uh, whether they have fusion of the neck, whether it's just advanced age, whether it's arthritis, any of these conditions would cause neck immobility. So neck mobility is your friend when you're intubating. Neck immobility, the inability to move the patient's neck, presents some huge challenges. And we'll actually approach the trauma patient or the C-spine precaution patient and intubation in the classroom. We're going to, uh, we're going to show the technique for that. We'll also present a little bit of literature that you can read about um, to dispel some of the myths associated with uh, C-spine stabilization during airway management, emergency airway management in the trauma patient. We'll talk a little bit more about that. So lemon. Lemon tells us about uh, the ability to uh, recognize and to predict difficulty in intubation, and it allows us to come up with a plan B or a plan C uh, before we ever even get started. All right, so that's it for now, and uh, we'll continue on in the next video.